I met Christopher Lee in a chat room on the internet. I began to look into his work. He publishes a blog out of his dojo in Honolulu and Create a Beautiful World is happy to bring you a conversation with Christopher Lee. Christopher, thank you for being with us. For people who uh, just want to do Aikido as a social activity, you know, they go and it's an aerobic social activity, um, and that's fine. You know, they're not interested in being combat arts, they're not interested in deeper unity with the universe or worldwide peace, whatever, that's fine. Um, they also get people, uh, as I said, there's a disconnect, because there's a disconnect with the explanation, you get people who uh, are increasingly tech, techno, right? They're, they're just doing, doing the techniques over and over for 30 years. And, and in a way, um, that was kind of the line that I got when I started, although I, I, I confess I kind of believed it. You know, after some time, maybe because I'm a little slow, you start thinking, how would that happen? I don't know how that would happen. I, I have no idea how that would even occur. Right, so maybe that's not such a great explanation because you look around and I know people who are doing Nikios for 30 years and maybe they're not such great people. And there are other people in other arts who are doing the same wrist locks and they're not, you know, they're not getting the same, those, those kinds of effects built into that particular joint lock or, or technical technique. Uh, technique. There's a difficulty with Rihe Ueshiba. I mean, you talk about there are, there are very few people who are close to that because Sokako Takeda was doing something unusual with his body. And all these, people who, all these people who met them, became their students, were awed by them, were astonished by them. Uh, all these people, when they meet them, they talk about how unusual they were, how strange they were. They did these things to them and they couldn't feel it, right? They don't know what's happening. When you're using your mind to control your body to do something very difficult, be it meditation or something, it's, a, it's kind of a meditation with a feedback. So you can see, you can feel what you're accomplishing. Osensei took that intent-based training, I believe, and used it as his vehicle for his own personal and spiritual development. So for Murihi Oishiba, all of these things weren't separate the spiritual, the physical, the uh, philosophical. It was all part and parcel of one unified method. At one point he says, uh, you know, I achieved all this through uh, training in Aiki. He says, I don't know any other way to do it. That's how he did it. You know, that's how he's teaching you how to do it. And, and, and when you get to that point, then you start getting into a neat little package. You have this physical method which helps you to train your mind, or your mind helps you to achieve the physical method. I don't know if there's feedback loop there. Uh, you, that, that training also evolves into training for personal development, for spir spiritual development, right? It all becomes part and parcel of the whole. Then you have something that, well, perhaps uh, if you say Aiki is love, or Aikido is love, then perhaps you can start to answer the question of, well, how do you get there? but at least you have the potential to do it. It opens up the possibility of doing it, which I think has kind of been abandoned in modern Aikido. You, you get lip service to high, highly philosophical goals, but no underpinning of how you would reach there. You have uh, uh, highly developed technical methods, but then nothing beyond that. It's all physical outer movement. Oh, since I said, Aikido is the study of intent. So when the flower of intent blooms, the world changes. It's a very powerful statement. Aikido is the study of intent. So when the flower of intent blooms, the world changes. Uh, through that process comes a deeper understanding.